All right, let's try this again. This is the second time recording because somebody, not me, maybe somebody. Oh, shit. Of course, my arm's blocking him. Back there, somebody, maybe that pooch back there, maybe, um, had to just go and grab a squeaking toy right in the middle of my recording first time around. But welcome to the video, everybody. My name's Tyler. I go by Zany Online. And I'm back home from Colorado. Um, I was out there staying with a friend I met here uh, from this channel and on Discord. So, um, you know, just in case you're wanting to make some friends, looking to, you know, learn some stuff about Linux or whatever, I do have a community where others, much smarter than me, can, can teach you stuff. And uh, you can make friends. So, yeah, go down there and check it out. I'm very happy to be back home. I'm also missing Colorado very much. It was very nice out there. Miss Scott. But, nevertheless, I'm back home and I'm back to using Arch. Um, I was on Gentoo, um, but that's besides the point. My home is Arch and I'm glad to be back here. Now, this video is just going to be me showing off how I use my computer and Arch here um, and kind of going over a lot of the basics of how I use my system and what's going on, um, as well as kind of telling you guys some of the new stuff that's going, going on that I've changed about the way that I use my system, uh, which has made it look much cleaner and nicer and newer. I like it. So let's kind of dive into it. First things first, the terminal that's up here. Um, this is Alacrity. This is my terminal emulator of choice. I really like Alacrity. It's extremely fast. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what or why you would choose Alacrity, it's GPU accelerated. So in, um, you know, not every use case, but there are some use cases where uh, Alacrity can be a lot, and I mean a lot faster than other terminal emulators. So that's awesome. <clears throat> and I'm also using DWM still. Um, if you're unfamiliar with me, I've really freaking like DWM ever since I've started using it. I really like it. Um, now, DWM is my Tiling Window Manager. If you're unfamiliar with what Tiling Window Managers are, let me just go ahead and take a second to explain them. Um, window Managers are a program that are on every OS that you've ever used. Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD, whatever. If there's a graphic environment where you can see graphical programs, you're using a window manager. And the window manager is a part of what's called your desktop environment, which is a suite of programs like uh, a program for showing you notifications, a program for having this bar up here, all of that stuff. All of that is in your desktop suite that we call desktop environments. That's your environment for using your desktop. And then you also have um, your window manager is a part of that. And it's the program that manages how your windows are displayed on the screen, how, how they're managed on taking up your screen real estate. So in Windows, um, Mac, and quite a few desktop environments for Linux as well, they are what's called floating window managers, where it controls how your window is going to show up on the screen. Um, it's going to either make it full screen, like maximized, or you know, take up a portion of your screen, whatever. And that window you can grab and drag around freely at all times, no problem. Now, on tiling window managers, tiling window managers are designed in a completely different way. They are designed to maximize your screen real estate at all times. That's kind of the goal. Um, also, tiling window managers typically, not always, but pretty much in all cases, are keyboard driven. They're, they're meant so that you use them with key bindings to kind of speed up your workflow. I mean, most of the time you're going to be typing on a computer anyway. So if opening up programs, closing them, moving them around on the screen can all be done with key bindings, then you become a much faster, you know, you don't have to keep going back and forth between the mouse and your keyboard. So let me give you an example of how they work. So obviously I had that 
terminal window open. I just pressed a key binding, which for me was the Windows or Super Key, Mod Key. It can be referred to as different keys all the time, but that one, and if I hold that down and then press Q, it'll kill whatever window I have open. Um, also, if I was to press uh, Mod Shift Q, that would kill the entire time the window manager going to be kicked back out to the login screen. Uh, if I press Mod Enter here, I'm gonna get, well, a window uh, and it's going to take up the full m amount of my screen and that's because it wants to maximize it now technically speaking with tiling window managers by default this there's not going to be any gaps between the bar and stuff this is all like all of the kind of fancy decorations and gaps and all that you're seeing there is stuff that I've patched in to my tiling window manager um, with different tiling window managers you can add in features and um, some of them come with nice pretty stuff like this out of the box but a lot of them don't and you have to set this kind of stuff up yourself but the first window I open up is going to take up the full amount of my screen let's say I open up a browser next it's going to cut the screen in half and slap it over here and so I I have two windows open and they're going to be taking up the full amount of my screen if I open up uh, let's say uh, my file browser I can open that up and again it's going to open up over here take up half the screen because that's the new application and then my other two are going to go over here and I can move these windows back and forth um, you know do all of that nice stuff but this is kind of what you can expect with tiling window managers I enjoy using my computer this way just just because I, for one I've gotten used to it and then two it does it does actually let you like kind of use your computer faster than you would normally. Um, Cause I mean, for me to open up, I'm trying to think for me to open up like three or four different programs would not take long at all. Uh, you know, like, there you go. I've got all three of those open, took no time at all. And so I can, I can get rid of them easy peasy. Um, I very much, I very much enjoy using my computer this way. Um, but so that's kind of how my tiling window manager um, is set up. You, I mean, you saw it, you, you see it functioning. I've got really nice animations um, for, you know, my windows. And the way that I did that is actually using a custom um, version of PyCom. So, um, what I just opened up here uh, on Linux, when you start up your window manager, whenever you log in and start up your graphical environment, Xorg or Wayland, um, you'll you'll be running this little script here, which is a .xinitrc file. Uh, that's what it's called. And um, in here I have PyCom. And this is actually a custom version of PyCom because you can get custom versions of PyCom that have this. Like if you see here, this is not just transparent. There's like a Gaussian blur um, in the terminal and rounded corners and very much enjoy as well as the animations also. Uh, all three of those are added into this custom version of PyCom. If you're unfamiliar with what PyCom is, uh, PyCom Compton, these are words that you'll hear pretty frequently in Linux. Uh, these are compositors. Uh, if you don't know what a compositor is, that's fine. You don't need to know what they are at all. Just know they are typically used for pretty much getting rid of screen tearing, providing nicer three uh, like 3D graphical features for your environment. And a lot of the times they're necessary. Um, not always, but a lot of the times they are. Um, so I've got PyCom custom version, gives me all this nice stuff. I like it. Um, you know, I've also obviously modified the bar and made it come down a little bit. And uh, the only the only minor thing that kind of like I know that's not quite right is if I have a window open, the, the I, I have this patch that makes it to where it's centered in the bar, which I really like. Uh, but it for some reason cuts off like half of a letter every time I do that over here on the end. So if I get rid of it, you can see now the other half of that M is back. It's really not that big of a deal, but I just don't know why it happens. I have no idea, but you know, so there's that. Um, but I tend to like to use 
um, more terminal based applications uh, here recently. I've been using Ranger. Uh, this is my file browser and I absolutely love it. I mean, it's, I, I can just go through here to my assets for thumbnails. Uh, hello? Oh. What did I do? Oh, pff, I pressed the colon. Lol. <laughs> I had no idea why I couldn't move. But yeah, so you can see like I can view my pictures and stuff in here in my file browser. And again, it's fine. I, I like it. I like it. It works great. Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't know. I've, I've been enjoying using the terminal based applications here more recently. Um, I'm also looking forward to getting back into game development very shortly. Um, hopefully that there'll be some live streams on that. But to be honest, like using your computer this way, I, I, I very much enjoy. Um, I don't know that there's much else for me to talk about. Cause like, I just kind of wanted to explain like how I use my system and, uh, how it's set up. So I think I've covered a lot of the like eye candy part. Um, but we'll go into the Xnet RC so you can see kind of what I'm doing here and I'll explain some stuff. So when you log in, um, you can you can install things called display managers on Linux. Um, I actually am using a display manager. The display manager that I'm using is, uh, excuse me, if I go in here, I believe it was, it's called LY. Uh, I believe that's what it's called, LY display manager. Yep, that's it. So this is what I'm using. It's a very, very basic login, like, you know, screen. Um, you don't have to use these. You don't have to install one and have a proper like login screen for your computer on Linux. Essentially, what you can do is just run start X after you log in, um, or you can install one of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, um, don't install this display manager for your first time. Um, it's not that it was difficult to install or anything at all, but it, it's just, there's a lot of other more feature rich ones out there that are easier to use and don't require, you know, understanding anything at all. So I would just recommend using those unless you want to go with this one, which again, this one's very lightweight and very nice. I really like LY. It's a great display manager. That being said, if you don't use one of these, you could just log in and after logging in on Linux, you can just type out start X and run it and then you'll start up your display manager um, or one of these. Both of these methods are going to start this script here. Um, I believe, I, I'm, as far as I know, most login managers are going to start it unless you're using something weird, but like GNOME or something like that, but it's besides the point. Um, so here inside of my script, what I have going on is we're going to merge my X resources file using XRDB, which if you're unfamiliar with what this is doing, that's fine. You probably don't need to do it right off the gate. Like it's, it's okay. But, um, your X resources files where you can set up a lot of, a lot of stuff for X programs, like X terms, stuff like that. And so I've, I've loaded that. And then this X render super long X render command here is for setting up my displays properly. I have a 1440p that's 165 hertz and I've got I've got it here and then a 1080p screen that's a vertical over here so I've got to set them up and that's what that huge ass command there is uh, you don't really know need to know how to do that by the way um, if you're new to all this stuff and you're getting into it uh, I have a program on here that I can run called a render and a render is a great little program uh by the way i know i need to do some gtk theming don't pay attention to that it's fine okay i'll get around to it <clears throat> but you can open up this little program here and you can configure your outputs orientation for them get them all set up apply it and then save as a file here and then if you um go into it by the way i didn't explain i'm using vim uh, again, if you're new to like Linux and all, all this stuff, Vim is just a text editor for your terminal. Um, 
but if I go into dot, I believe it's in screen layout. Yeah, workstation. This little script right here, you'll see it's got that command here. And the only thing that I added was after setting the resolution was a dash dash rate 165 for 165 hertz. That's it. That's all I added. Uh, but I just copied that and put that in my XNN RC. Um, you know, so that way every time I load in, displays are set up right. I launched PyCom for all the good effects and rounded corners. Um, and then I start up Dunst, which Dunst is my notification um, system. So if I do a notify, send, and we'll just say, hello, we get it. Hello. Perfect. So that's how I get my notifications. And then this program here is one that I I haven't used in a while, but it's um, it's for changing the um, color temperature of your monitor, uh, which can help your eyes. Um, but I'm not using that right now. And um, and so like the stuff that I'm not using, you know, you see I've got comments out over here. And then setting the wallpaper is just using nitrogen. And then I have DWM status, which gives me the little date up here. It's a little script I wrote. And then we start DWM as the very last thing. So, yeah, not too complicated there. Uh, I mean, nothing crazy going on. Now, if you want to know, like, how anything I've got set up is, just so you know, uh, we can CD into my config suckless folder and... You'll see I've got my D menu, DWM, ST, all that stuff uh, config set in here. So if you want to check out any of the stuff that I'm doing, I will be updating my dot files right after this. So, you know, you should have a very up-to-date version of what, what, what my system is in those configs very shortly. So if you want to check that out, link's in the description. Uh, again, if you like the video please hit the like button. Um, if I missed anything and you're curious about anything, because I know I missed something, drop it down in the comments below. I'll talk about it with you. Hope all of you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.